Am I gonna have to assemble a list of things that are never funny for you, Andy? Yeah. Okay. Hello and welcome to Things We Talk About. A podcast where we have conversations things that matter. I'm your host, Randall Thomas. With me across the table, my dear friend. Wait for it. What's Lazarus Kane. <laughs> God, I love that so much. All right, welcome to Things We Talk About, ladies and gentlemen. We're switching things up a little bit. Uh, last episode, we started a series about androids or some shit. It was, it was it's a series on mind, but we talked about AI. Yeah, whatever. And we're going to be doing that every other week. Yes. We're releasing those episodes. Yes. And the one before that, we talked a little bit about history. We did. Um, so we've got a lot, of, a lot of new things. We're changing it up a little bit more today. Now, when we started this podcast, Lazarus came. Yes. Uh, I wanted the idea of bringing in comments and emails and things from the listeners to bring onto the show. Yes, yes. A, a larger conversation that we, we bring into the conversation that we have uh, on the podcast. Well, we have a lot of them. Um, so instead, the idea was to make... <laughs> Uh, an entire episode, more or less, answering the questions. We're going to try. Uh-huh. We'll see how it goes. Oh, there's no trying. We're doing this. <laughs> but the, it's, I've already hit record, buddy. Oh, okay. This is Strap all or nothing. In. We're on the recording train right now. All right. The recording train has no brakes. The, the monorail, okay? Monorail. We're going in a circle. Yeah. You got it? That's yeah. from The Simpsons, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's like one of the few episodes yeah, I've yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we've got a handful of emails and something Lazarus and I talked about before I mm. pressed R. Um, which, which, for those of you who don't know, is text speak for record. He, uh, those of you that didn't know that. Um, so before we hit record, I was talking about the emails that, because uh, we, we shared an inbox. Like we have an inbox that Lazarus yes. and I share. T-W-T-A, T-W-T-A mail, mail at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, email us any questions, any issues you might have. Questions, with the show, whatever comments, you concerns. Whatever. Whatever invitations. you got. Dick pictures for Lazarus. Dick so whatever pics. it is that you want. Or for me. I mean, whatever. They're fine. Yeah, I mean, hey. I can like, appreciate it. You don't, don't sell yourself short, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you want to send us, it's there. Um, to, to be sent upon. Yeah. Is there whatever. a special fancy word for that? To be received? To, to get something? Yeah. To, to re- catch? To receive. It's, it's, it's there to, to receive it. Yeah. To receive it. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll go with that. So it's there to receive it. We've gotten uh, a handful of questions. Now, most of the questions that are directed to me... Yes. Uh, are actually questions to ask you. Oh, really? <laughs> dear, it's, it's not, it's, dear Randy, please. <laughs> yeah, it's like Randy please Thomas. Ask can Lazarus. you ask Lazarus this question? Uh, like, okay. There are almost no questions directed towards me whatsoever. Sure. And mentioned on a previous episode, like I'm kind of like a. It's usually pretty obvious as to how I feel about things. I feel mm-hmm. like I don't really hide anything at all. But you, Lazarus Kane. Are the enigma. I'm an enigma you, wrapped in a vex. You are the mystery. You are mm-hmm. the one where I think you're going to think one way, and you just blow me away with something else. Uh, good or bad? Because a lot of times you surprise me. You in know, a good I way. don't. I'm not even. I'm not even trying. It's just like I'm gonna say this, and then you get this look on your face, and it's like I did it again. Well, that's usually because <laughs> you use use a word that's more than two syllables. That's usually where the look comes from. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's not even two syllables. Well, whatever, dude. If it's if it sounds <laughs> fancy and it's not used, like on... uh, like uh, swanky, swanky. or ritzy. Okay, so that there was a thing <laughs> that I was not invited to. And Neither was I. Someone asked if I was going, and they wanted to take swanky pictures with me. And yeah. I was thinking, like, okay, well, Swank you know, I don't pie. really want like sexy pictures out there of myself with this, uh, you know, a strange woman. And it turns out that's not at all what swanky means. No, no. <laughs> and then I was trying to explain to explain to Randy what it was, and so I used the synonym ritzy, and he was like, "I, I don't." Out, outside of the crackers, dude. I don't. I don't even know it was. It's a like thing. the Ritz Carlton Hotel, super it's fancy. A, well, it started because Nabisco bought them out. False. Okay. See, I don't know. These are things I don't. know. I don't know that, but I'm gonna go with false. Yeah, so. they they bought it out and they no. changed it to the Ritz. No. It's like an no. I think because they're supposed to be fancy crackers. Like the 1-800 Ask Gary Amphitheater, like. Ritz Cracker sponsors the hotel. Stop. And they bought the song, putting put on, on the Ritz. It wasn't it wasn't that before until Nabisco bought it out. You live in big big cracker. Big has been cracker. has been buying out our shit for a long time now, and frankly, I'm sick of it. Okay. It's, oh yeah, Nabisco. <laughs> this, this 
Are those the gnomes? Like the Keebler elves, don't they answer to Nabisco? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. See? Yeah. It's those fucking elves, man. Yeah. Can't they trust um... them. Hiding trees and like... <laughs> I think... I know I know. Kraft actually has... Is or has strong ties with a uh, tobacco company. I think Nabisco does as well. So, oh my, with yeah. tobacco, yeah, big tobacco. That's like, scary. That, that is actual conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. So what What is your theory on that conspiracy? Oh no, I just think it's um, uh, it's just money. So every time I go to the Ritz Carlton Motel, I don't think you've ever. Uh, i there's the yeah. Okay. Well, let's say I will maybe eventually. Who knows? Who knows what my future? Sure, man. Has like in store we, for me. we blow up. Like we'll yeah. Yeah, let's let's say we explode all over our listeners' ears, <laughs> and we take off, and they put us in a Ritz Carlton motel. If I'm spending M- money hotel. there, well, whatever. Yeah. So I, I, if, if we're staying there, does that mean the money that we're putting there is going towards big no, tobacco? No, because it's a separate thing. I don't know um, if they're still independent. Um, we're going to find out because the internet knows everything. Yeah, that's a good place to look up information, I've heard. <laughs> Let's see. Ritz Carlton. My favorite thing about tobacco... The um, favorite thing about tobacco... Are the uh, the logos. And not the Greek word. Like, the logos. logos. There you go. That's a fancy word. The logos that, like, the camel dude... Yeah, wearing a leather jacket, smoking a Joe cigarette. Cam- uh, yeah, Joe Camel. It's cool as shit. Like honestly, it is. That's why they're not allowed to put it up places anymore. Isn't that stupid? It's like if you want kids to smoke, let them smoke. You don't want kids to smoke. That's the thing. And like you can say like, oh, it's stupid. They won't do that. Except now we're down to like seven point five eight percent percentage people starting smoking. So clearly, isn't it, isn't it weird that like people it's not weird? Try, it's how people try. work. That, that, I know that's not. Weird. <laughs> it's weird that like people still want. To smoke cigarettes. Oh, it is. We, we, like, we talked about that. Yeah, like, I mean, I'll smoke when I'm having, like, a drink and I'm out in a bar and someone's, like, lighting. I was going to say the F slur. <laughs> but I was going to use You are not it. British. You're not allowed to use the word that way. Just like you're not allowed to use the word, uh, the, the C word flippantly. I'm not? No. That's, like, my favorite word. Uh, too, well, too bad. Oh, my God. So many rules. Oh, it's a subsidy of Marriott. Marriott. Gotcha. Now, is Marriott also run by elves? Um possibly okay they because um, i know that the hilton motels are actually run by trolls that, and, and ogres that, oh okay <laughs> um yeah no and marriott it looks like owns itself it's not um near as i can tell so there's a there's a shirt of this band that i this metal band and they're british Mm-hmm. Uh, and they use the C slur a lot. Well, they're British in their songs. Yeah, and their shirts all have that on there. Yeah. Now it's a British band. If I were to buy one of their shirts and wear it, mm-hmm. how would how would that fall on me in America? Yeah, because they sell they sell them on their own tour. Um, like I I don't necessarily like the band, but I, I like the band they were opening up for, and I all of their shirts had like their song lyrics on it, and the C words yeah, like yeah, yeah. every third word. Yeah. Um, how would that go for you? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just asking you, like, for you, obviously, society would have an issue with it. But, like, you, would it offend you if I wore a shirt that just said, like, cunt on it? Yeah, um, again, um, not a good word. No, it wouldn't go well for you. Uh, you might be like, yeah, no one's saying anything. And it's just, I'm, it's totally okay for me to do this. And it's just, but it's not. And it's also not really okay, I think, for people to walk around with, like, slurs fuck, fuck on their shirt. Well, also that. Yeah, because it's just, it's, it's weird. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, uh, anyone can do that. Like, have some class. Right. right. No, I agree. I agree. All right, so let's, let's get down, let's get down to, to business. it. business. We've got all Defeat sorts. the Huns. The what? The Huns. The Huns. Yeah. What, what is a Huns? A hu- the, to defeat the Huns, like Attila the Hun. Oh, I thought it was Attila the Hut. No. Okay. Am I getting my, my science fiction mixed up? With your history? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you are. And Had- that was also a Mulan reference. Oh, dude, I can't make it through that movie. It's so bad. The movie's terrible. How are we friends? Uh, because I think, we're, I think, we're adults. I, I think we've come across something, again, that you decided that you weren't going to like. I don't know, man. That I, movie is a classic. I like, I like a lot of Disney films. I like uh, Beauty and the Beast is incredible. Yeah. Um, Little Mermaid's okay. Uh, Lion King is incredible. 
Uh, I like Aladdin quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I even like the sequels to Aladdin, which a lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. But the Prince of Thieves, which is like the third one, and everyone shit all over it. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, granted, I haven't seen it since I was a kid, but like, I liked it when Kay. I was a kid. Uh, Mulan came out, and I saw it, and I thought it was so boring. I like Hercules, too. And then the uh, the other one with the dude with the back. And the hunchback the Notre Dame? Yeah, I saw that one in theaters with um, like my grandma, and I thought that was extremely boring. There's like an era of Disney movies that were really bad for me. I think I, I well, I don't think it was the movies. Uh, <laughs> I think you may have been like an angsty teenager. I was I wasn't a teen when those came out. I was mm. like like ten. Yeah, exactly. Um, wasn't that sort of a tumultuous time in yeah. your life? Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, I don't know, man, because there, there are kids' movies. May have come early. Like I watched Snow Day when I was twelve, and I love that movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jingle All the Way is like one of my favorite Christmas movies. Right, but that they're not awful. those. Those movies aren't trying to teach you anything. What's Mulan trying to teach you? Um, to, to be strong and stand up for yourself and like every, every other Disney movie. I does. think this is a good example of you reading way too into something. No, no. Cause because every... we have a difference of opinion, whether I like something or not. And you think it's some sort of like psych- psychological deficit that I have. That's not deficit. No. But you do understand like yeah, I'm yeah, allowed yeah, to just not like a movie because it you, sucks. I do get that. I do get that. <laughs> but the problem is, is that when you don't like something that is universally liked, Right. Well, country music is very popular, and I can't stand it. That's fine, and a lot of people don't like country. You are I'm sure literally there's a lot of the people that don't like Mulan, too. False. You, you, are think, literally... you think I'm the only one in the world that doesn't like Mulan? Uh, you are the first person that I have ever met uh, that didn't like Mulan. But granted, we are two adults talking about a kid's movie. Uh, but it was we were kids when it came out. We've grown up with it. But what right? I'm saying is, like, how many people have you actually sat well, through? I uh, sat through and watched it with? Well, just talked about Mulan in general. Often. All the time. Weird. Yeah, you know, like you know, let's get down to business, and then it's like we just say a couple, we just do a couple bars of the song. We're we're like the the, the he's teaching them how to be soldiers. The the command how about. to be a man. Yeah, yeah, be a man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 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 that okay. one. It's catchy. Yeah, it I also is. don't like Eddie Murphy that much. I don't think he's very funny. He's not a major part of that movie. No, but he's supposed to be like the uh, the comic relief. Yeah, I thought he did good, and did well in Shrek. Mm-hmm. It's the same character. I know, but it's it's. Uh, <laughs> how do I say it? Because it, it is pretty similar, and that's why I kind of like put it two and two. And I thought the, mm-hmm. but I like the theme of Shrek, and Shrek came out when I was an angsty teenager, mm-hmm. and I thought that movie kicked ass. Yeah. And that movie had all sorts of stuff. Like fart to teach jokes. You. I love fart jokes. Yeah, you do. I love fart jokes. It even <sighs> like hints at a swear word one time, and I love swearing. Yeah. I like fat people. There you go. It's great. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I just thought Mulan. But then again, like I don't get hard about Asian culture. Like a lot of people do. They get really excited to talk about mm-hmm. you know Asian. Like you're and you're one of them, and many of my friends are. They mm-hmm. get excited to talk about Asian culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, I find it kind of be boring personally. Like yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah, so it doesn't excite me. Like it excites a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of your friends that you that you talk about Mulan with would also say that they are very intrigued. Well, no, it's but it's also like uh, like Hercules. You said you didn't like Hercules. Yeah, that movie sucked. It, it's terrible. It did. Uh, we, we you need to rewatch it. Like you're acting like I don't have a seven year old person. I have, I have a kid, man. I've seen that movie like four hundred times. Okay, and my daughter likes it. I have no idea why you could how you could not like it. Then that's okay. Um, <laughs> there's there's something I try to explain to people. Like there's this nostalgia that when we like something when we were kids mm-hmm. that like blurs our vision when we rewatch something as adults. Because we're like, I love this when I was a kid. And you go back and watch it. And even though it's complete dog shit, because the memories that you have of liking it when you were a kid supersede your gen- adult brain trying to make sense of dog I shit. I generally don't have that. Like, I understand what you're saying. Okay. And like, you know, like I have had moments where like, I like went back and watched something. It was like, this is not Some, this is not what I well. remember. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah I've like, had several of those. Yeah. Um, so, but like the Ninja Turtles, the, the Ninja Turtles flicks, the the first two, anyways. They were never good. Uh, I love them. They were fun, but fun is not good. And you know, the first time they were fun, the first time. There's no replayability. Oh, for you, thing. maybe. I've I've watched them on my own as like a teenager at least like 600 times. <sighs> I'm not a kidding. Like I would play a tabletop <sighs> RPG with my friend, and mm-hmm. we didn't have the rule book, so we created our own rules, and we would just have the Ninja Turtles movies going on in the background for hours <laughs> on loop. Okay. And it was awesome. But anyways, yeah. that was like the nostalgia factor mm-hmm. made a dog shit movie. Very entertaining for me. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. 
It, yeah. it is possible for you just not to like something because I, don't I like it. That's totally. I agree, and I know. Okay. I just think you're wrong. Uh, of course you do. Anything <laughs> I say that makes sense, you don't care about. You will immediately, oh, that, you'll immediately that... dismiss it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how you are. That's how you operate. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's get down to business. We have emails to get through. We do. Um. You grabbed a few. I grabbed a few. All of them yes. are directed at you. I Apparently, think even the ones... I I wanted to be fair and be like, well, I can't just have them all aimed at me. No, uh, I think you're more interesting than I am. <laughs> I think you have a lot more things, more better, more to be specific. Better. Okay, uh, more better things to say about shit than I do. Okay, because um, I might be more better at certain things than you are, but you are way more better when it comes to picking your brain okay because my brain is not you're not really picking much <laughs> you know what i mean that's what you'd like everyone to think yes anyway. and that's the plan yeah <laughs> uh no um i understand what you're saying and i will take the compliment whether Thank you. it was it was I a compliment with you it was 100 yeah. percent a compliment that's what i was going for anyway so that was me burping and covering my mouth. Good, like a like a you know like a vaguely civilized person. Yes, it, it makes your life easier actually in the long run. Yeah, I mean I'm I'll probably cut this part out too, but still it does. It does make, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I'm like, fuck me, like why do I have to do that? Yeah, as I was thinking on the way over. It's like mm, just gives well, me more work. It's your fault. Like yeah. if you were not a barbarian on tape, you wouldn't I can't have help, these problems. Man. I got I got you it. can you're, help you're it, taking, and that's the problem. This is like one of those Disney movies. Where they take like the slovenly housemaiden from the poor neighborhood and try to turn her into a princess. So that's called Pygmalion. Or uh, My Fair Lady is the movie version where the guy's a late 1800s English uh, linguist and he claims he can, uh, all he needs to hear is like three sentences of, or something like that, of your speech, and he can tell you within. Like three miles where you come from. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a big deal, um, and uh, he makes a bet with his friend that uh, basically this guy is of the opinion that um, basically like uh, nobility and aristocracy, like all of those traits, those are essentially those are cultural. That those those are not inborn traits. That those, those are things that are learned. Um, those are those are nature all the way and there's no nurture to do with it. Um, and the guy says, the guy who's like British and upper crust and old world money and stuff like that okay. is, is like, absolutely not. Uh, you're crazy. Uh, you're my friend. So I'm going to make a way. So as long as you're wrong, I'm going to make money off of you. Okay. Um, and so basically uh, one way, one way or the other, a bet ends up being made that um, the linguist has Ye Long to turn a, uh, flower, uh, like a flower seller yes. on the street cart who's dirty and like gross is like, is like maybe a couple hard times away from becoming a prostitute. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, speaks, to be honest, we all are speaks. Uh, that's fair. Um, speaks with a, like a Cockney accent, you know, as opposed to like the like smooth, you know, upper crust sort of thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And she's like just like dirty, just really like soot covered because yeah, it's the you. industrial revolution. Yeah, and she sleeps next to the train tracks. Or yeah, something. yeah, 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 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Got it. I can pick um, it. And so it, the, he challenges the, the bet is that this guy has to turn her into a proper aristocratic lady. Okay. Um, and then take her to a ball or like a dinner party or something like that, mm -hmm. um, and see if anyone notices. Um, but she was gross, right? Like the when woman, he started. When she started, is that why it's called Pygmania? No, Pygmalion. Um, it's because she looked like a pig. No, it's P Y G. It refers to uh, clay. It's 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 refers to a Greek word that's clay that's used for piggy banks. So you, you he forms so piggy her, banks are play on words. He forms her like okay. clay. Yeah, piggy cool. banks are a play on words. Whoa, that's interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, 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 I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know that, man. Well, that's your job, anyways. You're gonna be the Pygmania. In our relationship, you're going to take me. <laughs> you're this... the Pygmalion. You're the one getting sculpted. Well, like don't, clay. don't go on name calling, man. <laughs> <laughs> but <it's... laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm the Pygmania, and you're going to be sculpting me into a beautiful, blushing bride. Yeah, into a proper aristocratic lady. Okay. Well, it's going to be a fight, but I'm in, man. I already stopped Good. saying the R word. Yeah. I 
as of five minutes ago, I stopped saying the C word. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to work on it. We'll I'm going to be a, prop, you, yeah. be a proper lady. We're, we'll get you to uh, the Royal Institution <laughs> yet or something. Some fancy place. The Met. We'll take you to the Met Ball. Met right. Gala. No, the what? The Met Gala. What's the Met Gala? The Met. Uh, oh, dear. Is that where you meet people? Like no. In past the, tense? The Metropolitan. It's, I believe, in New York. This is the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Every year they have a gala and it is... Do I have a look at the art? No. Okay. You, yeah. You mean you should because it's like a fundraising event or whatever and like... Whatever. But um, it's like see and be seen. The point is to show up, be fancy and like... Okay. Be to, be, awesome. to be ritzy. Yes. To so be you as dress ritzy... Up like, you dress up like a Keebler elf. To be as ritzy as humanly possible. Or elvenly possible. Yeah, but without being overly showy. Yeah, I, I can do that. Skill. I, I mean, no, keep, keep in mind, I wore a suit for many years to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know right now I'm wearing a shirt well, that has like a picture of a homeless we, guy We're on talking it. like $50,000 <laughs> suits. Okay, like, yeah, I don't. I got mine at thrift store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, th- this is the sort of event that's, you know, all of the like, the, the fashion coverage that surrounds the Oscars, but it's actually about the Oscars. Uh, the, yeah. The Met is just the fashion coverage. Okay. Oh, dude, like. That's the whole point of it. When... When I filled in for this band, we played at the uh, the Grammys. Um, it was like the Florida branch of the Grammys. Wow, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Grammys. And it was pretty cool because they had like the Grammy background thing. They took mm-hmm. our picture in. Well, I stepped out because I, was, I wasn't part of the band. I was just filling in. Mm-hmm. But it was still like cool as shit to see like how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Very cool. Anyways, let's, let's, let's for the third we'll, time. We'll get to advice at some point. Uh, I don't know if all of it's advice. A lot of it's just <laughs> questions. Okay. Okay, this one's from a guy named Zamza. I don't know if that's his real name or not. Uh, I'm not a name person. Not even pronouncing it correctly. How do you pronounce it? I have no idea. Z- I just know you're not pronouncing it correctly. Okay, well, I'm going to call it Zamza because the pronunciation isn't there. It <laughs> says, Randy Thomas. So already a loss. What's LC's feelings, if anything, on the evolution of language? For example, my friend hates the fact that literally is used as figuratively. <laughs> I always correct people whom use who instead of whom. I think you used the wrong one there. What, whatever. I'm just reading the email. Yeah. Whom use. Okay, continue. And with as many people as make the mistakes of the different variations of you are the four yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you. It would make sense that eventually there's four. Okay. And really one of them kind of surpasses all of them, which is the you are. That's not a thing. Uh, that, that is kind of this man's question. To kind of summarize what he's saying is like, even like the semicolon, which is something this guy apparently is from. Uh, he's well traveled, so he made sure to put that in his email. But basically, mentions how like when teaching English in another country, uh, he says like the, the semicolon isn't even talked about. Yeah. It's, it's brought up as in like a history lesson. This yep. used to be a part of the English language; it no longer is used. Well, and this guy is now a program, and he says he uses it only to program and to write scripts, but not in the day-to-day thing, since that's kind of weaned its way out of most common English language. Yeah, I use it all the time. But, um, no, I understand what he's saying. And it would, it would be, it's left out because it's, um, it's not necessary for you to be able to speak English. Um, and it's just one of those really weird Englishy things, right? I use them all the time. Yeah. I, um, love, I love them. No, they're great. Um, but... Uh, yeah, basically, it's beca- I imagine the reason why it's done is because we don't have to teach you about it. If you read enough English literature and stuff like that, you'll pick up on it and you'll be able to use it. So you don't the, need the future, Elsie's future, is that only nerds can use semicolons because they're the only ones reading that It'll shit. be a set status symbol, yes. That's where I was going with okay. that. It's you, like you the, speak my language. The, it's like talking in cursive. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because kids don't talk well, in cursive anymore. That, that, <laughs> They don't to teach Americans, that, that would be the British accent, but yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even, even, and then he ends it with, uh, you know, Elsie is more sensitive to words than most. I am. That's how, how he ended um, up. No, no, that, so that's why um, the semicolon, like, isn't used, because English is hard enough to learn, and you only have so much classroom time, so if you don't have to teach them about it, and they're just going to pick it up anyway, then, then why put it in there? I imagine. Um, I, I imagine a future. I am not an English instruction. <laughs> I imagine a future, and I envision, and I'm hopeful for it to where that shit never matter. Like, it doesn't matter anymore. And only scholars can read the grammar. Declaration of Independence. Gra- a grammar does not matter anymore. It's not how language works. Sorry. Uh, 
Um, but I mean, like with texting, because it's already kind of broken down. Even when I was in college, and that was a long time ago, uh, like I, I went to composition class when I took it. Nobody capitalized their eyes because they were used to the program oh, doing it for them. It's interesting. Uh, and she, the the professor, was very upset. And this is before text messaging too. It's just everyone had used. Uh, I have noticed people and in, like inner office IMs, you included, uh, don't capitalize anything. I don't because I don't give a shit. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I also used wrong you are on purpose. Please never do that. Um, yeah, that's why everything should just be the you are. Everything no. should be the you are. No. Whom should just be obliterated from the English no, language. Because, and semicolons can go suck a dick. Um, whom is whom? Whom is pretty pretty obsolete? It's pretty uh, um, arcane. So why why is it okay to say that about whom, but it's not okay to say about the semicolon? Because semicolons have an actual use. Well, so does whom? No, it doesn't. Depends on whom you're talking to. <laughs> right. Uh, well, no, it, it it has rules to go with it. But the semicolons actually serve a function of it's combining. Lawless. It's lawless. It has no rules. Right, exactly. You can put a semicolon anywhere. Saying the word. In the middle of a word. Who gives a shit? You know, say, saying the word whom does not change a sentence, mm -hmm. um, but where you put a semicolon will. Okay. Yeah. Um, you te you like, you technically, you'd be like, oh, well, because they said whom, I know more. You know who they're talking about. So if I see half of an ass shot, would that be considered a semicolon? No, they, someone would have to be bisected <laughs> like vertically, vertically okay. or, or horizontally at the right, uh, the right level. Future things to think about. Yeah, you go to like the, the bodies exhibit and probably see a semicolon. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got, I got another question for you. And this yeah. one's another relatively serious one. I don't know how serious this one is, though. TLDR, uh, language, uh, some things are going out, some things are coming back in. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But do you feel like, well, you you already stated your case that you don't feel as if the semicolon is going anywhere. It's not. It's not going anywhere. It's like it, I like if it phases out, it phases out. I won't be too broken up about it. But oh, yeah. we It'd still be pretty need sad grammar. if you were. Yeah, <laughs> my semicolon. I really like semicolons. So. Oh no! <laughs> like by the it's it's going to be a hundred or two hundred years before it phases out. So yeah, but it, I mean I'll be there. But eventually, all things are just going to be done in abbreviations. And all everything is just well, going to be Twitter. Yeah, speech. but it, that's called economy of action. Like you see that in uh, sign language, like in American sign language. Mm -hmm. I think most sign languages. Well, the only one that matters is American sign language. <laughs> Let's be well, honest. Well, ours is actually based on French, uh, not British. Believe it so it's called, it should be called the freedom sign language. Then. Freedom sign language? No, <laughs> uh, no it, is, it is American sign language. Uh, but it. Uh, it is basically, that... you develop uh, slang and stuff like that, um, and it, it basically, as slang develops, they get the signs get smaller and smaller okay. and smaller, as opposed to being like these big sweeping motions. Um, they just like flick, they become like flicks of the wrist or stuff like that. Okay. Um, it's the same thing with words. It's why we have contractions. Um, it's why a lot of the words that we use now uh, are that are one word used to be hyphenated, and then right. before that they used to be two words. There's a like there's butthurt a few... used to be two words, then it became hyphenated, and now I think it's one. Uh, I don't think that used to be two words, but between used to be two words. Between two words. Between, um, and uh, let's see, on top, um, uh, upon. or uh, stuff like that. Okay. Like there's 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 a lot Those of words. Those are called compound words. Uh, they're just words now. They're not, um, they're not even called compound words. Yeah, I don't believe so. so. Everything my everything my daughter's learned in school is a lie. Oh, uh, it's true. They told her Pluto's a planet. That's a they lie. They did tell her Pluto's yeah. a planet. Yeah, I was I was upset. It's it, like I was all excited that Pluto. I came I came in that day and I'm like, <laughs> do I say anything? You like, should. I you should have to say say something. Say something. Yeah, that's funny. Because because like egg almost like I'm like, did I did I do wrong? <laughs> like you're but like I, I don't know how much of it's like. So the biggest problem yeah, is, so since apparently since this is where we are in this conversation, um, the biggest problem with Pluto being a planet, there are many, many problems with Pluto being a planet, but the biggest problem with Pluto being a planet is like, so, so where Pluto is in the solar system, mm -hmm. it sits in an area called the Oort Cloud. Um, it's called the Oort Cloud because it's super dusty and it's icy and like it's just, there's just like a, imagine like the asteroid belt, yeah, except like way bigger and way icier. Um, and, uh, the problem is, is that Pluto is not even the largest object in the Oort cloud. So um, there's like another Pluto in there. There's, it's like not even the second largest object in the Oort cloud. 
Like it is, there are larger objects than Pluto. So if Pluto is a planet, then these other ones should be planets. Yeah, too. exactly. And then then you, it just goes off the charts. Um, yeah. Well, I think it's sad. I th- I think you should just let them have it because who gives a shit? Well, the, so the, the biggest thing, and I mentioned it when it came up earlier, is uh, Pluto was not a planet. Um, and then the outrage was so much. The public's outrage was so much they changed it back. Dwarf planet. Yeah, they, they yeah. well, they, yeah, they 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 gave it that, and it's like that is scary because that that's like mob mentality, like common mentality shaping science, and yeah, it's not the, the way it's supposed to work. That's the way, especially with social sciences. That's the way it always works. Well, no, with social sciences is different. Social sciences is we are studying it. This is not like astrophysics, and, right? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, mo- the mob mentality will always win. It, yeah, not necessarily. Like, it shouldn't. Like, it I, does absolutely win. should not. I agree with you. But yeah, that's, it, I mean, that's we, the way it works. We had, we had a lot of years where it didn't, I would like to think. Um, uh, I would like to think, but I don't know if any of that yeah, could be Yeah, there's that. They proven. require a lot of study to yeah. say whether or not. Anyway, next question. Next question. How does LC feel about To Kill a Mockingbird and Huckleberry Finn in schools? Oh, you mean racism? They, well, just just the book, like being read in schools, since it's a it's classic literature. Yeah. Um, but they both have uh, the N word in them. Yeah. And the To Killing Mockingbird deals with rape. Oh. Uh, and there is a lot of talk last year about it, uh, it being banned in certain schools, and parents complained about the book being banned because of the language and because of the rape case. Yeah. Now, now you're kind of for me, from my perspective, you're kind of all over the place with censorship. Yep. So I kind of want to know. I, I mean, I'm curious about this as well. I kind of want to know where you're at on this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it should not be banned. Okay. Either of them. Um, I think that they should both, like, I get that they have objectionable subject matter. Right. Um, Huckleberry Finn is in a historical context. Uh, and uh, like, like uh, Django, like when they said the N word a bunch of times in that movie. Yeah. Because yeah. it was historically... It was this historical okay. context, right? Um, and the whole idea was like, this is a bad thing that's happening. And as I recall, Huckleberry Finn, um, the whole point is that Huckleberry Finn is the only one who treats this guy like a human. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I think. Yeah, that's definitely... I think it's Jim. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's the only one who treats this... And if, and if like that was the case moving forward, like at the time... It, right. You know, he would not use that word because that is the whole point yeah, that's, of Huck's character. That's definitely. Uh, I, obviously, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, contextually, it, that's it's a timepiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't whitewash that from history. Yeah, exactly. And like, not teaching kids about it is only going to make things worse. Like, they should yeah. know that this you was a thing. Yes. Because if you if you stop talking about something, it doesn't make it weaker; it makes it stronger. Right. Um, especially, it, it allows like everyone to make their own decisions and for no one. It kind of like how corrected. how Nazism is banned in Germany. Like they shouldn't have done that because then. But they still gonna... talk about it though. That's the thing. Like it's still taught in school. It's like they didn't they didn't ban all mention of it, right? <laughs> it's not Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And how, that didn't work out for them either. No, it didn't. <laughs> so. Um, in fairness, uh, th- turns out the rumors were true. The rumors? Uh, it, though, so the reason they don't say Voldemort's name is... Oh, we're going to the Harry Potter. Yeah, thing. yeah. The re- okay. reason they don't say Voldemort's name is because, well, yes, he was literally Magic Hitler. Um, he, uh, the so rumor... Is that your thing? Or is that... That's a pretty funny name for him. No, no. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like... I mean, it occurs in the 80s, but like his... It's like World War II. And then like... It almost like it almost became World War Three during the books. That's why everyone was so scared because Magic Hitler literally came back to life and started gathering up the SS again. Okay. Well, um, but list- any- listeners, if you don't want to be Magic Hitler, you should go take a look at our Patreon page. Oh wow, are we there yet? Are we there already? We're, we're already there, buddy. Oh wow. <laughs> hey, listeners. Let me tell you about how to help us help you become more informed and more entertained. Yeah, so go to our Patreon page and take a look at what we have to offer. We appreciate you joining our conversation and in the process helping us get better equipment, better content, and provide you with even more content. Not only that, but Patreon has a tiered system of rewards that lets us give back to those who give more. We've got a ton of things planned as rewards from unscripted before and after recordings of spontaneous conversations to conversations that try and get Randy to actually read something for a change with interesting and hilarious consequences if he doesn't, 
to Randall's rants, where I try to see just how easy it is for Randy to fly off the handle for basically no reason. Here's a hint, it's pretty fucking easy. Remember, by becoming a patron, you are directly assisting in the growth and ability for us to move us one step closer to providing more and better content, and soon enough, do it full time. Aw, yeah. <laughs> so, to learn more, go to patreon.com slash T-W-T-A P-A T-R-E-O-N, that's patreon.com slash T-W-T-A Patreon, to learn more about our goals and what we've got to offer. Thanks for spelling that out for us, buddy. <laughs> we are back to asking LC. And LC. we're back. You we didn't back. even take a bathroom break. Didn't even take a bathroom break. But as, as, as I mentioned before, I no longer drink booze while recording podcasts. Yes. Uh, like a proper I got adult. Le- yeah, I guess... You're trying to groom me. And like stop. a proper professional, like we'll a no- say. Well, I'm not going to say, because drinking a job doesn't make you unprofessional. It, uh, apparently it does. <laughs> it may, may not make me unprofessional, but it makes you unprofessional. Yeah, I, got, I was getting, there's like a certain sloppy. sweet spot that I had, and I was getting fucking sloppy, man. Yeah. And uh, you, if you listen. I was surprised. I was, you know, was going to say something mm-hmm. at some point, but you, you beat me about a week or two to the punch uh, yeah well you know i go back and i listen to the episodes and there's some parts where i've cringed and said oh man randall what are you doing yeah what are you doing because you the more you drink the more chances you uh you have to double down yeah there's there's that and there's also like just even the tone in my voice becomes sloppy as fuck oh uh, yeah there, if there was like a sloppy as fuck i would eye. be at the top yeah at any rate to finish my thought um, the reason they don't say Voldemort's name is because <laughs> so uh, you can't let it go, can you? <laughs> there was there there was an urban legend that said that if you said Vol- like Bloody Mary, like if you said Voldemort's name, he would appear. And Bloody Mary is not Typhoid Mary. Correct. Okay. Different one. Uh, but anyway, um, if you said he would appear, and that's why like Harry and Hermione both think that it's stupid superstition. They weren't there during the war. Mm-hmm. They get that, but also like that's not how it works it's funny they call it su- stupid superstition when they go to a school for magic yeah it's like well there is there's still urban know. legends that aren't a thing right you know even with wizards um in fact luna's entire character is based on her believing in stupid make make-believe animals that no one else can see yeah um but and her being everyone thinking she's crazy uh but anyway it turns out it is a thing hit he, he <laughs> voldemort cast a like this epic level spell, and so whenever anyone says his name, he knows where they are and how to get to them. Okay, it's like if I were to Google search on my computer, like how to make a bomb. Yes, and then so the Voldemort NSA would you would like, go on a list. So yeah. The NSA is like Magic Hitler. Yeah, it, w- it would be like if you did that, and then the NSA immediately kicked down your door. Okay. Um. So give it some time. Okay. <laughs> well, I should wait a little bit before they kick down my door. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. going to take a bit, but yeah. So what what do you have? From some, what are some of the better emails that you brought in? The better emails? Let's see. Um, well, since my printer is on the fritz. I had to send it to my phone, but that's okay. Um, so, actually, uh, so I came across the, uh, this one in, in the pile, and it was uh, I want to ask this person out, but only because I find them physically attractive. Is that weird? Is there a context of age? No. He's um, also unsigned. Well, let's dox him. What's the email address? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll go and answer. Uh, it's perfectly normal to want to be with someone when you're attracted to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get that out of the way. Use protection. And if you end up... <laughs> or don't. I mean, nobody likes to. Let's wake be up the next day and don't be physically attracted do, to them Do anymore. the morning after punch. Yeah, whatever. You know. <laughs> it's not, not even a little funny. Um, um, but the, the... If I could have to assemble a list of things that are never funny for you, Andy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me, l- let me say this. If you are attracted to somebody and they are attracted to you, what the fuck is stopping you? Yeah. Like, why not? In worst case, you end up not liking each other, but at least you I did think, it. I think, so like, obviously there wasn't a whole lot of, like, elaboration there. And no context. Uh, no context right. whatsoever, but I, I think the idea was the concern that it may be, like, shallow. Like, that it's not, there's no romantic interest there, it's just you find them physically attractive. Well, I don't need to, like, take my hand out for a nice dinner 
But you light, light some candles. You find but you I, physically attractive. I your hand. Dude, look, my hand has so many stains on it. In fact, there's even like a part wow. of my palm that's got the shape of my dick on it. Well, uh, just, just, <laughs> just letting you know, this has been molded. Okay. Okay. But I don't need to have a romantic relationship with this. No, you to, don't. To have my way with it. Well, uh Right? Okay. You don't have yeah. to. No, you do not have to have a romantic relationship to have sex. You don't have to have a romantic relationship to have healthy sex. In fact, a lot of times the sex is better when there is no romance. Uh, sure. Because then it's like making love and it's like sweet. It depends on what you're there for. You know well, I mean? everyone's there for the sex. I mean, let's be honest. Well, no, I mean like, like yeah, but every everyone goes out, you know, for dinner. But like it depends on what restaurant you go there. Why did you go to that restaurant? Like... Did let's, you let's, did you did you sign on for making love or did you sign on for you based know, on the email sexy, and the way it sounds? Times. I'm assuming the guy is like a kid, mm-hmm. let's or gal. We don't know. Yeah, well, let's let's make up a story. Let's call yeah. him Jimmy. So okay. Jimmy is 19 years old and he's in freshman freshman year of community college. Okay. There's a girl in his class who uh, looks like she's in. She's giving the doomy eyes, the green light eyes. Oh, okay. Um, she's super hot. But he's never said a word to her, and he just wants to, like, he's jacked off thinking about her 17 times, and he still, every time he sees her, wow, wants to bed this woman. Or anywhere. Wants this episode to, is a different kind of adult. Wants the kitchen, this woman. Or whatever is, wants to shower this woman. Yeah, wants yeah, Wants to yeah. alleyway this woman. Wherever. Yeah, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. Onto like, the teacher's desk. Wherever it is. his boat. Why, why wouldn't he? I don't know. I guess. I think, I think there's this weird concept in... Uh, all cultures. It's not just an American or a Western thing, but like sex is taboo. No, it's a Western thing. Uh, have you been to Japan? Uh, actually, you talk about sex all the time. It's not. It, there is no like taboo associated with like sexuality and stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. Because I know that they censor their genitals in pornography. Yes, that is that is that sounds from like the Western culture. Suppressed. No, no, no. Like yes, they they do that, but also like they sell. Uh, used panties in vending machines. I heard that's only like in like the seediest parts though. But it's there. But, but I'm saying like the seedier parts, sure, but like for proper, you know, normal but Japanese. But even in the seediest part of America, they don't have that. Yeah, but in the seediest part of America, you can pick up a woman. Sure, you can do that way. in Japan too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Is, pro- is prostitution legal in Japan? Uh, I don't know offhand. Okay. Um, I don't think so. But maybe, uh, if you told me that it, it was, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, um, I know a lot about capital punishment in Japan, just not uh, the sex industry. Um, since Japanese law is not so, the sex industry is not synonymous with prostitution. Um, the se- <laughs> in fact, the words for the sex industry in Japan, the, the characters used are public morals. Okay. Um, is not synonymous with prostitution since Japanese law defines prostitution as intercourse with an unspecified person in exchange for payment, uh, which uh, so the, it's it's a uh, fuzoku. Uh, most fuzoku only offer non. You don't have to say it like that. Yes, I do because it's it's actually written that way. Okay, it's a, it's got a line K-O-O. over the U. So it's got the K O. F U Z F U Z O K U fuzoku. Um. Uh, I only offer non-coital services such as conversation, dancing, or bathing to remain legal. Um, you have to read the whole thing. Just what? What? Summarize. Like, what's it? What's it saying? Is it legal? To- no. So, so what you would, would we would refer to as prostitution is not legal in Japan. Okay, but what they refer to it also just means like having someone entertain you. Um, like having, having someone paying someone to come over and dance. But it was you. only made illegal in 1956. Yeah, whatever. Um, I just wasn't sure. I've just I've been told by people who have lived there well, that yeah. it's very sexually suppressed in Japan. Well, yes, because you. Well, are they white people? Yeah. Are they foreigners? Yeah. So, so the, that's the thing. Is like so the way Japanese culture is set up. As I am not a Japanese, um, you know. So, but as yeah, I yeah, am, you're talking matter of fact. Yeah. Well, yes, because I also have like read a lot and. You know, whatever. It's the same way I talk matter maybe of fact that, Maybe about that's everything. why you like Mulan so much, because you are enamored by Asian culture, and you cannot fathom someone who doesn't like it as much as oh, you Oh, no, do. absolutely I can. Um, but anyway, so the, the idea is, so American culture is very individualistic. Like, me first, you know, as you, as you said in an earlier episode, 
Uh, it's me, me and my, me and me my, my lady. girls, and after that, everyone's swinging swing, swing their fingers out. That is, right. that is the American way. Right, it's beautiful. Um, and we, we are about as far west as you can po- get poetry. on the map, right? right? But as you get east, more and more east, things stop being individualistic and start being more group oriented. Um, this is, of course, it's not a hard rule; it's no law of physics. But um, Japan is about as group centered as we are individualistic. Now, are there group sex? Is that a thing in Japan? Uh, I mean, I assume so, because it's a so. thing over here. It's a human thing. But we're not talking about group sex. We're talking about a probably teenage Anyway, man. the point is, they're foreign people, uh, and Japanese probably aren't going to talk to them about it anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Even if they were liberated. Uh, I'm going to, to say to this young man yes. that, worst case, you got to do, in the words of the 69 boys, hit it, quit it, then dip. Right. Well, I don't think I don't think this person is capable of that if they're asking this question. Yeah, but like if if you, just, Me, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Worst ca- worst case, you fuck it up and then you have a shame blanket to wear. and It's a funny story to tell. Like you don't have to like it's not a big deal. Not everyone can cart around shame blankets uh, so easily. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. Um, I have one here. That's actually to the both of us. Oh wow! It says, "Dear Randall and Lazarus, when I was 16 years old." My 15-year-old girlfriend gave me a picture of her in a bikini that I used to frequently masturbate to. Now, 25 years later, I found that picture in an old box. Yes. And I masturbated to it again. Uh, did I get grandfathered in, he says, pun intended. Oh, no. Uh, to being not. able to still masturbate to that picture? Or am I going to hell? Uh, those, are, that is, those are two very different things. Says, Sincerely, Nick R. Like, I'm not going to give his full last name. but I Nick. hope not. Um, so he spelled masturbate. Of course, now he's going to have a hard time sharing our podcast with his friends. Uh, Um, but, um, but anyway, or maybe he won't, maybe he doesn't, you know, maybe his friends will start coming over to his house and passing that picture around. Oh my God. No. Uh, you did not get grandfathered into the system because it is still super creepy. But I mean, Um, he, let's say it doesn't say on here, but let's say he was, banging this girl at 16 when she was 15 right is it any more wrong to masturbate to the memory of having sex with her so in the in the memory like you are assumably 15 right you are you are like reliving the memory so that's different um but if it's like it's like you as your current age with a picture of a 16 year old you know Mm -hmm. like then it's it's just no it's it's you did not get grandfathered in you are not going to hell um but uh because believe me there are worse offenses than that it's but you know whatever the point is is that you did not commit a mortal sin however you it is super creepy and you should not do it again okay (laughs) all right well is is it weird for him to still be attracted to that girl that picture of this teenage girl in the bikini like because thoughts are not yes. words words are not actions yes yes it is um is but th- thoughts become words words become actions um it is super weird as long as it's not like a compulsion right like it's not like as long as it's not like driving him then you know whatever um if you know if it, it all looks like that or feels like i'm worried that this might become that seek help immediately i i've heard through the grapevine um that you can't seek help for that because that's one of the things where they could, it could just be a rumor but that is one of the things where so like, there are reporting requirements yeah, i understand what you're saying if you're considered a danger to yourself or others or if there's like an actual like um so what you're saying is like again like i, I am i am not a lawyer um especially and not in this area uh but usually the reporting requirements again center around being a danger to yourself and others okay um and so in this case uh, there is no danger. So yeah, let, let's say this triggers a thought in this uh, now uh, guy, he's 40, this 40-year-old man. Mm-hmm. This triggers a thought. And now he starts going on the internet looking for young pictures of young girls in bikinis. And he meets Chris Hansen? I don't know who that is. Uh, from To Catch a Predator? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, no, let, let's say he's not even like reaching show. out to anybody. He's just looking at pictures. Let's yeah. say he's just looking at girls Well, it's, of course. Bikinis. Well, again, like... But he catches himself and says, you know what? This is weird. Yes. Uh, I'm going to seek help. Is that 
considered a potential danger if he's actively looking at so girls? so you know if if i was his therapist and like he came to me and was like genuinely like concerned like right. he's like i am i am coming this is not <laughs> it's, it's not it's not like lip service right right he's he's coming because he's genuinely concerned and he wants he wants help then no me being me me being the therapist i would not report him and you know assuming whatever the wording is didn't otherwise require me to do so um and i do not believe that it would um i mean i don't know it's just tough though because they could. absolutely should get help right they absolutely yeah. should get help they absolutely should but it's kind of discouraging if you think that you're gonna get rattled. well they could prison. they could yeah this the thing is is that like even if like someone reports you even though they didn't have to or like it's maybe not actually covered they misinterpreted it it doesn't matter once that ends up in the hands of of the police right um, so at the end of the day, Mr. Nick R. Fuck the police. Uh, no, okay. um, uh, no, uh, because again, like the, the, the machinery that the therapist sets in motion is good. We want it to be there. Okay. Right. And he, what we're saying about is like, what happens if it, they, they set it off and it shouldn't be, it gets set off. But I, I honestly, I would recommend like getting help, like figure it out, dude. Like. Okay, that's that's a good answer. Yeah. Um, do you have another one that you brought in? Yes. Um, this is to both of us as well. Um, hey guys, uh, I'm ready to head out into the world, and I was wondering if you had any advice on how to adult and stuff. <laughs> Living on my own is going to be a big adventure. But I want to make it make sure I'm as prepared as possible. Uh, do Thanks whatever do whatever it takes to pay your car payment. Hero in waiting. Yeah. That the most important thing you will have as an adult is your car, um, unless you live in a big city. I don't know what's like living in a big city, but yeah, where we live, um, and you know a lot of places. Yeah. To commute to and from work, you need a vehicle. Yeah. And well, you're better off losing your house and losing your car. Even in a big city like Chicago or something like that, like if right. you live in the suburbs, you could be two hours away from work. Right. The the idea is never go without a vehicle. Yes. Because you cannot, you cannot functionally adult in most places in the U.S. without a car. Sure. Right? Yes. Um, and uh, that, that yeah. to me, if you have an option between getting evicted or losing your car, make your car payment. Because worst case, you fucking sleep in your car. Um, that, I mean, okay. Well, first of all, don't, don't allow yourself to get into that position. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, no, but I understand. I understand. It, it does happen, mm. unfortunately. Um, but, uh, and I, I, I can't, I'm not going to go on record as giving, you know, falling on either side of that argument because sure. it's like a zero win situation um, for me. Another, another piece of good advice is, uh, don't be afraid to live with your parents. Oh, absolutely um, not. Now I you make it old, but, um, yeah, you might, you might hate it, but saving money is more important than your pride. Absolutely. You know, uh, and, and I, I'm saying that, like, I haven't lived with my parents since I got my driver's license. Yeah. Like, I've been on my own forever. I have. So. Yeah. But you, you know you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there is this stigma against... Uh, less, and l l less for our people our age, because we don't have a whole lot of choice in the matter. Like, generally, like, unless we, you know, make some poor life choices and then, yeah, yeah get get saddled, you know, I mean, you with have a family to, of our own. You have to really be super motivated um, and do a lot of things you don't want to do yeah. to be able to afford. Yeah. Um, a, a lot, a lot of people of, of like, uh, what you would call the, like the millennials or whatever. Yeah. Um, us and younger. Yeah. Um, within the last 30 years or so. Right. Right. Um, it is, it's a necessity, right? We can't go out of college and immediately buy a house. Well, I did, I did. I, I own a house and I never went to college. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But our parents, if they went to college, generally stepped out of college into a job and then shortly thereafter bought a house yeah it's it's definitely a different culture and yeah we'll, we'll elaborate on that particular issue because sure. that's a big complicated issue yeah um that we could pull back the layers but ultimately though that's that's my two big things it's like don't be afraid to ask your mom and dad for help yeah uh yeah, cause yeah. I, I have a hard time with that Absolutely. i did i did hit my dad up for something recently and that was very very was difficult like shut time. up and do it and i did it and you know it paid off my dad's uh thankfully an incredible man mm -hmm. uh, and was able to, to help me out with that but mostly uh, don't be afraid. Your parents should love you, and if they don't, I'm sorry. But don't be afraid to hit them up for help if you need them. Uh, don't be afraid to ask your yeah. friends for help, even though they'll probably fuck you because that's what friends do. See, this is this, but he he's totally okay with having so many friends. Yeah, whatever. 
Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I've got so many holes. See, in my, me, friends man. Used to my friends don't. My friends. My friends don't fuck me. Uh, see. That's a good quote. Um, okay, so Lazarus Kane. My friends don't so, fuck me. 2017. Um, let's let let's let's say what else? What's another big one for so people who first move out? I would say um, the, so. It's not as like earth shaking as keep up with your car payment. Um, but it, it can feel that way. The sum total of it is so it's called the rule of two. Um, and the, it is not a star Wars reference. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't get that anyways. Uh, the rule of two is, uh, there were always, let's not go down that. There are all, we know, no, we, we no, talked no. about it. There are always okay. two Sith, a master and an apprentice. Okay, okay. Let's keep going. That's it. At any rate, <laughs> um, the, the rule of two says that, um, you always have two of everything. Okay. At least two of everything. Two dicks. Sure. Okay. I mean that that works for me. Sure. Um, but like ah! the uh, the idea <laughs> is that uh, you treat two as one because in reality two is one and one is none. Um, because if if it breaks or you lose it or you know whatever it is and okay. it's important to your life, think of it like having um, backup, toilet paper rolls, a backup toaster oven. A backup toaster oven or if, if that's because if you don't have an oven and your toaster oven is the only way for you to get hot food have more than one toaster oven uh, because if it breaks your sol i guess i guess a lot of the advice depends on where this this kid's gonna be at well the, the rule of two functions no matter what right because it's uh, like no because if you are broke you can't afford to have two of everything no but you can't afford to have two you fight just like you you do what you have to do like to to like even if you don't like it you do what you have to they do gotta you gotta move out on your own to make that payment um basically uh you do what you have to do to have two of the things that you need right so the by example the the, the mundane example is buy more toilet paper when you're down to two rolls that's why it's good one. if you are in a relationship to make sure you have a side piece in case the first one dies, you can replace it. Uh, or to have two kids. You know, or, right? or just be in a polyamorous relationship. That works too. Um, actually, fun fact. Um, the Well, not so fun. Interesting fact. Uh, the reason people used to have like 12, 13, 16 kids is because they would all die. They would, yes. Yeah. There was like a 70% mortality rate yeah, before the age of 10. You get tuberculosis when you're four. Uh, in Mayan culture, uh, in the ancient Maya, uh, Kids did not have gender before the age of five. And you hear that nowadays and you're like, oh, that's so, that's so like modern for an ancient culture. And like they call it, no, it's because they like would they, they would, they would die and they were not yeah. real people. Right. Right. Before the age of five, because at that point we we're like, okay, so they're actually going to hang so around. So it's like, it's like post birthing abortions. I will, or a jaguar eats them or whatever. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. We got, we got time for one more. Uh, do you have one more you want to do? I have one if you, if you want. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you can go ahead. Okay. I got an email uh, to me. Um, oh. Um, it's actually one of the only ones that are directed to me, a question that I could answer. It says, where are the Let's Plays? <laughs> we did promise them one in episode five. Yeah. Episode five, we said we're going to do it. And honestly, listeners, we have been recording them. I have not been mastering them. Well, um, the good news is... You're going to be taking that over. Yes. Yes. So it'll actually get done. It will get done. Uh, I've, I've been procrastinating for a number of reasons. Um, mostly... Some, more of, some of them more valid than others. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that, that is... And basically, to answer your question, it's in the works. Yeah. Um, and it will be out sooner than later. I do I do finally have my hands on the whole Adobe suite so of... of software cool um which again is the sort of thing that our our patreon goes goes to support because that is a that is a monthly sort of thing and there are there are a few other ones that uh, are not cheap but yeah, we're not begging we're just like in reality the reality yeah is, we we need money to do this yeah like so it's, help us it's like anything else it's uh but anyway <laughs> so uh so yeah so we're we're gonna be working on it he has yet to give me the files uh yeah give that, me that's the, the files i i will give you the files within two days okay um, it's have, having, ladies and gentlemen, a little, little tip for you: having a time limit on something will make you more likely to do. That it. is another really good advice. Yeah. Uh, a bit of advice is uh, deadlines. Deadlines are huge. And as a matter of fact, in um, like logistics theory, 
uh, there's this idea that, and it comes up in business theory too, where um, a project will always expand to the time, will always take as long as you have to do it. Yep. Um, a, a, a good example of that would be, um, we used to have meetings at my old, uh, this company I worked for, mm -hmm. and the people who were the closest were always the ones who were the latest. <laughs> because even though yeah. it only took them five minutes to get there, it took exactly. them 45, it's still... They wait until the sure. last possible second. And in it. fact, uh, there's a, if you actually go into like systems engineering where you start talking about constructing logistic systems, sure. um, then you have people who start talking about um, that all projects are late. All projects, all, all like major undertakings, they all end up late. They all end up over budget. Uh, and so the idea is that, again, like uh, while projects will expand to fit the... Uh, you know, if you put an extra six months on there, it'll suddenly, miraculously, take an extra six months somehow. Right. Um, but at the same time, if you had done it in in two months instead of six, something like that, projects also shrink to fit there. Obviously, there's there's, there, there's limits in there. And there's compromise there, there's like a, to get something out before Christmas. There is a literal minimum it amount of time too. for something to do something. Yeah. yeah. Um, but beyond that, you know, which is really what we're talking about. So, you know, if it seems like an unreasonable but technically possible time frame, that's usually the best way to go. I agree. Yeah. And it's don't do it all at once with everything if you're not used to it. Oh, man. Piece Swiss, by piece. Swiss cheesing it is, is what we call it in my what, family. What is it? Swiss cheesing it. Okay. Because you uh, you have the whole block of cheese, and then you start punching holes in it. Okay. And it's less and less cheese, um, and so the whole idea is to take care of it in, in pieces. Oh, so actually I came up, uh, I ended up uh, sort of taking it to the next step, and I'm calling it uh, stratified doneness. And so the idea is, is that you have, like I am the sort of person where I have this big thing that I want to do, and it's like over there and it's huge and it's a, it's a big deal or whatever. And so, but that means I got to start at the bottom, right? I got to just like start from the basics. And, uh, and so it gets, it can get really demoralizing, you know, even if I like get like a lot of work done, like, you know, measurable advances, like majorly measurable advances, I'm like not even remotely close to my goal. Right. And so that can get really demoralizing. And so what you, what I do is I set things up so that like my first goal that I will be like, I am done with this project. I am completed is like that first, like real, like measurable, like milestone. It's a milestone. Yeah. 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 Um, and then you, you set up milestones and stuff like that and yeah. you're always working towards that, but it's not the main thing in your head. Indeed. And so it allows you to maintain. It takes time to adapt to that. If most people aren't used to being organized and, and making every decision a choice. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. But that, that is something that you have. Like, if you want to learn how to adult, that is something that you need to learn. One thing at a time. Uh, one thing at a time. Uh, then learn to multitask. Um, but because uh, it is possible if you have the right sort of neurology right. for it. Um, if you can't multitask, then don't. <laughs> that's, um, how, that's how people die in cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how people die in cars. That's how people like burn themselves out and stuff like that. Right. Um, if you. Uh, Yes, yeah, so just really like become the sort of person that can choose to do things, and it, it takes time. Like it is, it is an active renovation of the personality, but it's is completely worth it. It's how people do stupid, awesome things and like change the world. It's because they decided it's button chair time, which will come up a lot on this show. Um, so you have to be able to choose to sit down and work. Speaking of button chairs, yeah. Oh, we're gonna live it long. I think. I'm Are we okay? So take we'll, that pee break. I should have taken before. Okay, uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been uh, what we talked about. <laughs>